that my life is mediocre, that I have no meaning, that there's no purpose for me. I have no path forward. I was raised in a household with no father. I don't know what it means to be a man. I don't have the tools to deal with my problems. I was never taught how to manage my emotions. Boom, I'm going to explode one day on society. There goes another headline with public tragedies. Wow, who could have seen that coming? Men are so evil. We need to fix boys. Welcome back, tribe. I have an episode here, Why Boys and Men Are Demoralized. This happened to men in the wake of the sexual revolution. The destruction of men in the West is the great story of the last 40 years. Since men lost their clear identity as breadwinners in the 1960s, they become increasingly single, alienated, and driven to self-termination. At the same time, educational and economic performance has declined. There is a problem right now with boys and men, and one of the sources of that problem is we don't have a new script for masculinity. We've torn up the old one, the breadwinning one, we haven't replaced it. For decades, men have needed a positive message to map a strange new world that's threatened to make them culturally redundant. But our institutions have instead contrived to discourage men from their infancy. There's a surprising amount of hostility towards boys in this society. To put it bluntly, boys are politically incorrect. Their play preferences are stymied in elementary school. They're taught non-stop from the time they enter school that the entire masculine enterprise is oppressively patriarchal and evil in its essence, derived as it is from power. Even the American Psychological Association apparently agrees with that now, their idiot report on so-called toxic masculinity. Men learn to play passive early, as tales of toxic masculinity thrive at almost every level of academia. Public school education has become completely permeated uh, by this kind of anti-male propaganda. Girls experience the education system quite differently. They're trusted and supported, and sold the narrative that men enslaved women as a group throughout history. Consequently, they walk away in their early 20s, armed with the bold and empowering message that their time has finally arrived, and they readily meet the world with agency and drive. Data point saying that women are more likely to move than men in search of opportunity. This more likely so to go abroad, more likely to study abroad, more likely to volunteer for AmeriCorps, more likely to go for the Peace Corps, more likely to be the first to buy their own home, less likely to be living at home with their parents in their 20s. But is it so surprising that men fail to keep pace when the message for them goes something like, you're terrible, your ambition is toxic. Your assertiveness makes the world a worse place. So be passive, go sit in front of a screen, consume some stuff, entertain some stuff, and be androgynous. That's the message that they send to men. The pervasiveness of the idea that maleness is toxic and oppressive and in need of suppression has led to the normalization of misandry in the mainstream in recent years. Hi everybody, it's Janae and I am here with a video talking about how much I hate men and why I hate men. I think men are disgusting. We need to kill all men. I am sick of being a baby factory that produces more men that will just in the future, subjugate me. The kill all men hashtag is actually being shown all over TikTok. I think when I first looked at it, it had about 7 million views on the videos that use the hashtag kill all men. The hashtag men are trash has ignited a social media storm. It has split men and women even beyond the boundaries of social media. What's sad is this is all propaganda. This is an idea propagated from the powers of be to divide people. And the bozos at the bottom are buying into it. These aren't original thoughts. Somebody somewhere up high thought of a plan how to keep control for their progeny, especially as the generations pass forward. And then this was their idea. I know we're going to destroy the nuclear family. We're going to get women to feel a certain way about men. We're going to get men to feel a certain way about women. Then we're going to teach women they don't need men at all, that they should have single parent households, that they should depend on the government, that all men do is bring problems. And then you scare men off with horrendous court biases, with messages from the mainstream telling you that you're evil, that you're incompetent, that you're a loser, that you're not needed anymore. Have your spaces erased. No more gentlemen's clubs, cigar lounges, no more places where men meet exclusively away from women. No more mentorship, no more Boy Scouts, nothing. Every single male space has been invaded. And you're taught to be submissive to women because... They know better. They're the matriarchs. How many TV shows have we seen where the bumbling, dopey husband and the strong, competent woman dynamic is constantly played out? How many more She-Hulks? 
How many more horrendous cringe scenes from like Avengers of all cast girls walking together so empowered do we need to constantly gaslight women into thinking they're the shit? Meanwhile, their statistics on productivity say otherwise. Unless you're pushed through the door, you can't compete with men. Women don't want to be at the office until 11, 12 past midnight. Women don't want to give their lives to their jobs. They don't want to be career slaves. They don't take the same pride in providing for their family um, the way a man does. We're built different. But society is trying to replace men with a weak version that never rebels. And on the flip side, make women super masculine to try to be independent, growing them into the new economic power base that votes. Not only votes, but does as they're told. Follows the herd mentality. If a headline says this, they all agree. Must be true. No critical thinking. Very little of it. This is why corporations love women. This is why people who make products, producers, love selling to women. Even women in relationships with men control the household spending. They're easy to market and sell to. All you need is somebody that's emotional and you can sell them a hope and a dream. This is what the psychologists figured out, the pencil necks, all those focus groups at multi-million dollar companies. They figured this out, that if you can control the woman, you control the man. If you can get her to want something, the man will just get it for her. Now they just move the equation forward. Let's just cut the man out completely. Let women make every freaking penny and we'll get them to spend every single penny they earn. And we're going to control them with social media. We're going to destroy their brains with all the endless attention, the, the dating apps, the narratives of being a strong boss, babe, sex in the city, hypersexualization, my body, my choice, all this. If I sleep around, I'm empowered literally teaching them to devalue themselves in every way imaginable, not respecting their bodies, not respecting themselves, thinking they can use men for sex the way men could use a woman. And it doesn't work the same. A man can walk away. You get pregnant. You have nine months, a baby. It changes your life forever. Not only that, but nature deems it so. Sperm is cheap. Eggs are expensive. You get to choose who has sex as a woman. Imagine giving away the power of being able to get a man to do anything it used to be you had to get a ring to have sex. Now it's been reduced to hookah and chill. And then people don't even question this anymore. If you read comments on Instagram of somebody even calling out traditional values or telling women how valuable they truly are, how much, how much power they really have in the dating game if they just keep their legs closed automatically. You're a misogynist. You're a pick me. You're setting women back. They actively are brainwashed against their own interest. And the people at the top just rub their hands together like this. Just seize the dollar signs nonstop. And the idiocy continues. Very few people question this. Is this really what I should be doing with my life? Should I really not be looking for a man? Should I as a man really just walk away from it all? What happened to legacy? What happened to family? What happened to raising kids? What happened to a nuclear household? We know all the statistics. People are on more drugs today. Mental illness is at a sky high. Addiction and overdoses, crazy. People are not meant to be alone and isolated. Yet this is what we're churning out. These are the results. The results speak for themselves. Our society is sick. So the direction we're headed in is only going to make us sicker. But nobody questioned this. Instead, you'll get online and it'll be some woman telling you how men ain't shit. And it'll be some dude talking about if she breathes, she's a hoe and all this stuff. And it's like back and forth, nonstop, playing on people's emotions, no solutions. And this is why this kind of content is even allowed online, to be honest, because if it was making a difference, if people were coalition builders, in a sense, bringing two sides together, that's when the system turns on you, because that's a problem. As long as you're divisive, as long as you keep causing the very division they're wanting, you get airtime. It's not an issue. Men are no longer men. Quite frankly, I think they're trash all over this country. Honestly, the coronavirus isn't killing men fast enough. This is unacceptable. Hashtag men's rights, hashtag. Men's rights, men's rights to go to war and die. <laughs> I can't even say it. Men. At the next opportunity for any bill that's appropriate, I might actually put in an amendment to create a curfew for men on the streets after 6 p.m., which I feel would make women a lot safer and discrimination of all kinds would be lessened. We have to stop demonizing people and realize the biggest terror threat in this country is white men, most of them to the right. Society has told men to fuck off, and many have. 
turning in a state of demoralization to various forms of escapism instead of meaningful pursuits. The checkout is quite alarming and can be seen everywhere, most notably of late in the data emerging from the Pew Research Center. Nearly half of all young adults are single, 34% of women and a whopping 63% of men. Wow. 30% of men haven't had sex in the last year. 50% of men say that they are not looking for a relationship. When they say aren't looking for it's probably higher now. Post-pandemic, that's probably 40% of men and 70% are not looking for a relationship. Those numbers have risen dramatically post-pandemic. Our world has completely changed. For relationships, they mean I'm not looking for a woman or I'm not looking for commitment. And not actively pursuing any kind of interaction with women. Oh, shit. Societal factors say it's not a problem. Technology anesthetizes your brain better than ever before. Economically, you likely don't have a chance in hell at buying a house or vastly outpacing any female in the workplace based on your average wages. Why bother? Just do drugs, play games. This rapid retreat of testosterone-laden young men feels more like the premise of an eerie science fiction story than life itself. But here we are, with evidence to disprove the belief conservative men held in the 1970s that the emancipation of women would eventually lead to a Mad Max-style apocalypse where men would tear down society in response to the pain of their displacement. In reality, the opposite has happened. As opposed to us going out with a bang, we're going out with a fizzle. And the sort of rhetoric that I hear online from men is a lot less, I'm going to go out and do something about this. It is a lot more I'm going to retreat in to me, just hold on tight boys, the sex robots are coming soon. These are non-ironic comments that I see on the internet. Men are lost like never before, and few seem to care, as society is increasingly captured by an ideology that doesn't have their best interests at heart. I started off thinking that this was an oversight. I thought that this is because people have overlooked something. And then I realized, no, they haven't overlooked anything. This is intentional. They intend this. This is a constructed part of our culture to demonize men and to banish men and to make men obsolescent. Before the 1960s, no confusion existed about who men were and what they were wired to do in society. Men are wired to provide, protect, defend, and care for women and children. And the thing that most men did for virtually all of human history was get married, have kids, protect and defend your wife and kids. That was the role, and you were trained to do this from the time that you were a small kid. But with the sexual revolution of the 1960s and the later expansion of the welfare state, man's place in the world, defined by hundreds of thousands of years of evolutionary history as protector and provider, was sharply interrupted. No longer so essential to women and children, and devoid of an inbuilt social role, men were forced to grapple with the meaning of manhood. Large numbers of men were feeling a need for a map and guidance for how to be a man in a new world. But an inspiring vision for men's role in the new world never arrived. Instead, an insidious war on men was initiated after radical intellectuals invaded the education system in the 1960s and 70s. A lot of radicals that came out of the late 60s, 70s went into the universities. It was the one institution that you could take your radical politics and find a home there. They were more radical than the liberal professors who hired them. As the older scholars retired, and the young radicals gained a foothold in many departments. I mean, certainly women's studies, they were always there. But even in political science departments, history departments, certainly English departments, they would start hiring their own. And if you came in and appeared to be conservative or even moderate, you wouldn't get hired. So we have a lot of teachers who were trained in left orthodoxy going into... I told you this is only going to get worse. So imagine this process playing out in the next 20 years, 30 years, 40 years. So look at all the TikTok kids we have today, all the all the bull rings, the face tats, the radical leftist ideology that they're all spewing. Imagine those people are going to one day be this teacher right here lecturing the next generation. It's going to happen. So the message is hardening. It's not softening. People have this uh, misunderstanding that we're going to see a reversal somehow as the system accelerates and crashes. We're nowhere near the acceleration phase of the decline. It's only once the TikTokers of today, the most mentally unstable, you see them like rainbow colored hair, all that in the neon light room, I identify as this, that. When those people come into power, when they start filling these positions, when they get to make policy decisions, that's when the hard radical leftist ideas 
will crystallize throughout all society and the decline will begin to accelerate. As of right now, it has not happened yet. This is only going to get worse. You have a small window to get your affairs in order and leave. There's no turning this around. There's no red wave. There's no conservatism that's going to happen. This is entrenched. This is the new way of life. We're actually, as the United States, bullying other countries into ac accepting this ideology or we cut off funding. And you think you have rights in the United States? By the way, you don't. There was a guy that made memes. You need to Google this. I can't obviously get into it on this platform too much. He got sent to prison, convicted for making memes about Hillary Clinton. The United States is about to vote on a new legislation that gives them power to micromanage the internet. Literally every piece of it. You won't, not, you won't see it covered anywhere. Nobody's talking about it. We're distracted with uh, Russia, Ukraine, and we're distracted with Israel, Hamas, and you're not seeing the power plays being done right under your nose as all this stuff is going around. None of this is an accident. This is all planned. You notice rich people live in gated communities with guards far away from you. Do you notice that the only time your paths may cross is on the highway as you commute to and from work? We live in a two-tier society. We really do. There's the rich and there's everybody else. And it's never been this bad. Coming from me living in Phoenix, Arizona, it blows my mind to see that over a little hill is complete destitute trailer parks, crime, graffiti, trash, failing infrastructure, closed buildings everywhere. And over on the other side of a little hill is a perfectly watered green grass golf course with houses and gated communities and people golfing. It's one hill over. One hill over. It's not on the whole other side of town. It's a little hill you can hike over. That's all that separates our society in America. It's an illusion. Worse yet, I remember driving around in Phoenix. There's a community of trailer parks. Blew me away. These, pl these places were at the time like 30,000, 40,000. I mean, absolute poverty. Poverty. And if you know anything about the southwest of the United States, they have canyons, they have mountains, they have a whole bunch of peaks in the desert. Well, in Phoenix, there's this one kind of outcrop of rocks that forms this little hill slash mountain. And on the top, you see mansions worth five million dollars, ten million dollars, infinity pools with water flowing. And at the bottom in the valley, it's not that far away. You can perfectly see this guy's house on the cliff. At the bottom is trailer parks with people driving cars that are like 30, 40 years old. Rinky dink mobile homes that look like some people's closets. Nothing but the pores. And the pores have the luxury of looking up at that little cliff in front of them and seeing all the multi-million dollar mansions lined up. How sick is that? That's That was one of the sickest things I've ever seen, dude. You can drive down this destitute road of absolute poverty, a little trailer park neighborhood, and up there at that next hill is cliffs with multi-million dollar mansions. That perfectly encapsulates what America is. So disgusting. And now they've entrenched that fundamental belief in the culture by dividing everybody so that they can maintain that distance because you don't want the plebs coming together. You need to keep them separated, divided, destroyed, angry at one another. As long as the poor blame each other and don't all point the fingers up there at the mansions, at the people with power, everything will be okay. You get to keep your influence. No one's going to question anything. So is it going to get worse? It's going to get a whole lot worse. All of this is fabricated. This shit is fake news. You go out anywhere in the rest of the world, men and women do not treat each other this way. There is no adversarial energy. There's no boss, babe. I don't need a man. There's none of this shit seen anywhere. Men want to protect women and provide for them. Women want to turn a house into a home. They want to be nurturing, loving, take care of their man. All that is normal. Everybody wants to make families. Pregnancy isn't looked down upon. Marriage isn't seen as some form of suffering. It's ridiculous. This shit is all fake to our junior high schools and high schools. So you have had a transformation of the educational system. Despite the introduction of the Equal Pay Act of 1963, the loosening of divorce and abortion laws, and the fact that more women than men have been admitted into undergraduate programs since 1982, the radicals within the education system insisted that women remain hostage to a patriarchy constructed to oppress them personally and politically. What I have against politics as it exists is the male supremacy built into it. Was there male supremacy in the 1980s in England when Mrs. Thatcher was Prime Minister? Yes. 
you are making a case that there is male supremacy when 53, 54 percent of the votes are female. Yes. Are those 53 or 54 percent of the electorate who vote where they just don't quite get it? Voting doesn't determine social power. I mean, there's a million other ways. You can vote any way you want and still get raped. For the most part, men are treating women unequally and are benefiting from it. So long as bad men existed and the patriarchy remained intact, a revolution was an urgent necessity, they said. So as revolutionary movements often do, they targeted children, the boys who threatened to grow into oppressive patriarchs. This is not because... You notice what they're doing now in the next step of this plan with the <clears throat> identity stuff? Who are they targeting? They're just rinse and repeating the strategy. Now with a new idea that divides us into a thousand little boxes based on how you feel. As teachers and education theorists and feminists dislike boys, they sincerely believe that something is seriously wrong with young men in America. And a growing number of experts now claim that the nation's boys as a group are disturbed, depressed, too undomesticated, too competitive, far too violent, and for that reason, in need of being re-socialized in the direction of femininity. This movement that Harvard University, led by Carol Gilligan, William Pollock, gender equity experts in various departments of education, this is not about helping boys academically. This is a movement, as they say, to sort of rescue boys from their maleness. The scheme to re-socialize boys and generate the most female-friendly environments possible must account in part for the fact that boys are universally failing at every level of the school system. If it's happening everywhere and every level, it's not the kid, right? It's not Chris's problem in secondary school in a particular education system or my son's problem in the US K-12. It's a structural problem with the education system that's just not male-friendly enough. It's the same story at colleges and universities, where the mission to rescue boys from their oppressive maleness continues. Can you imagine being a young man on campus today? They're taught their masculinity is a pathology in need of a cure. They're monitored, they're policed and demonized. And neutered. Everything's been stripped off of them. They've been made to feel ashamed of anything virile. They have nothing to identify with. This is precisely why so many young men were so hungry for a message like Jordan Peterson's when he rose to fame in 2016. Speaking about the appeal of his message, Peterson said, There are just a lot of people, I would say, who are sick and tired of having their desire to move forward in the world and to achieve something and to take their place as adult males, let's say, who are under the weight of accusations that their ambition and forthrightness is a manifestation of something that's fundamentally tyrannical. It's not doing anyone any good, and it's also not true. It's really a terrible thing to do to young men. That's why they're bailing out of universities like mad. It's an unhospitable place, and it's unhospitable precisely because of this doctrine said that throughout history the fundamental relationship between men and women was one of power essentially slavery it's like fine believe it if you want it is true as peterson says the men are now rapidly bailing out of the universities there's like a 60 40 divide in schools right now where women are 60 percent of the new graduates that's unbelievably tipped on the other side of where it was before. The trend worsened during the pandemic. College enrollment as a whole declined in 2020, but that decline was seven times greater for male than for female students. Mm -hmm. Fucking wild. And you think, well, what's the problem with that? Well, when it was 40, 60 female to male, we decided to do something about it with Title IX and affirmative action, and we leveled up women. Now that it's 40, 60, or you could even argue 33, 66 in terms of graduation because men drop out, the question is, well, are we concerned now? I had nope. a school administrator email me one time. He's like, the idea that you could even reach that topic and have that conversation, like maybe we need like affirmative action for men in schools, or maybe we need to start looking at that. That's like an inconceivable conversation. You can never even begin to have it. Because the moment you're seen as quote unquote pro young man, the natural assumption is that means you're anti women. It's a zero-sum game for the education system, which sends its students out into the world, primed to impact influential industries with the kind of anti-male propaganda they've been sold in schools. We see evidence of this in the journalism of outlets like the New York Times mm -hmm. and the advertisements of companies like Gillette that promote messages of toxic masculinity. We see it in the reports of psychological associations advising clinicians to watch out for so-called negative masculine ideals, such as... Yeah, and considering schools are so aggressive at re-socializing and reprogramming young men. I think if you're a father in America today, you need to take a good hard look at public education in your 
son. I see homeschooling absolutely becoming far more popular than it's ever been, simply because how much of a failure public institutions are. I mean, the graduation rates, the competency rates versus their international peers is absolutely abysmal. Our kids are getting outcompeted. Instead of focusing on things like STEM, we focus on gender ideology and social justice warrior issues. Meanwhile, kids, the international ones, are doubling down on science, technology, math, etc., engineering, you name it. And they're taking all the jobs. And they're ready for the world. And they speak multiple languages. And they're in highly competitive environments. Meanwhile, our kids here are just complaining about the system, the patriarchy, who's the victim, who's got the most brownie points for victimhood. And those are going to be our future leaders of the world. So yeah, if I were a prospective father, man, I would do everything in my power for homeschooling, honestly, because nothing worse than busting your ass at work, doing your damn best to provide for your family and watching your seed be corrupted every single day they go to school. Every single day, you're watering your seed and then someone comes and scoops away some of the dirt. They implant toxicity in their head, they make them feel like a victim or a predator or less than, punish them for being inquisitive or having an imagination or being competitive or whatever it is that young boys love to do, right? It's all demonized. So it's watching your seed whittle down day by day. It's toxic, man. The most important thing you can instill in a child's mind is the way they think, their patterns of thought, their self-talk to themselves. That's the most important thing you instill in a young boy, the basic foundation of how his little voice in his head will talk to him throughout his entire life. If he gets to download programming that's extremely negative, that tells him he's evil, he's not worth it, he's a predator, he's incompetent, he's a broken version of a girl, women are superior, all these ideologies that get drilled into his head, if that's his base layer programming of how he thinks when he has an idea or when he attempts a new goal or he runs into issues, roadblocks, and now he's battling the little man in his head, his base layer programming on how to move forward through all these obstacles, he's going to fail horrendously. He may not even get started. He may just end up retreating as we see most men with this base layer of programming they have they retreat into their rooms they play video games all day they watch porn all day they consume drugs all day they eat fast food they cope with food all day it's feel good now so i can mask the pain later that my life is mediocre that i have no meaning that there's no purpose for me i have no path forward i was raised in a household with no father i don't know what it means to be a man I don't have the tools to deal with my problems. I was never taught how to manage my emotions. Boom, I'm going to explode one day on society. There goes another headline with public tragedies. Wow, who could have seen that coming? Men are so evil. We need to fix boys. They're broken. They're perpetuating massive tragedies of the public nature. It's all boys' fault. But all the stuff I've listed before, nobody talks about. Nobody mentions. It's only the end result. That's it. They look at what happened, who did it. They never ask why. How did this person grow up? What was society like around them? Family life, friend circle, atmosphere in school, nothing. It's just, oh, that was a boy. Oh, he did this mass shooting. Oh, it's all boys' fault. It's all men's fault. We have a masculinity problem. We have a toxic masculinity problem. An umbrella term designed to literally devalue anything manly anything masculine, quite literally devalue your pure identity as a man. One of the main reasons why I left the West is wanting to start a family. And if you start a family in the West, you've poisoned your well before the first drop of water even started filling. The soil is toxic. The culture is the soil. Our culture is rotten. Stoicism, heterosexism, and self-sufficient attitudes. We see it in the prevalence of diversity training everywhere, suggesting, among other things, the men would be liable to employ sexism and racism at every turn if left unchecked. We see it in the sciences, where scientists now embrace the radical feminist notion that biological sex is a patriarchal social construct or a spectrum. It's not correct that there is such a thing as biological sex, and I'm a historian of medicine, I can unpack that for you at great length if you want, but in the interest Bruh. of time, uh, I won't. So that's a very popular misconception. Can you just tell by the voice? You can tell, right? <sighs> Every legitimate scientist knows that this is absolute nonsense, but ideologues get away with denying biological facts by scaring professionals into submission. 
because of the animosity that some activists have for legitimate scientific experts, experts in the field don't want to say anything that's going to go against particular narratives because they know they're going to pay a heavy price for that. In some cases, they will be fired. They have their reputations ruined. Activists will go after their families. Like There's no boundaries in terms of where the animosity ends. But the subversion of science can't be reduced to the threat of activism. Look at that, all that Institutions and the bureaucrats within them are critical players in this game. The collaboration of the bureaucratic machinery with it has to do with the assault on masculinity. Everything's all about terminating men and defining men out of existence. Masculinity is by definition toxic. Okay? Masculinity doesn't exist. And you see, this is, this is the proof of it. Men in the concept of masculinity have taken such a battering that countless confused and demoralized men now think, fuck it, what's the point? More men are finding out, hey, you know what? No matter what I do, it seems I'm being blamed as a bad guy. I'm just going to start isolating and pulling out of society. Unfortunately, pulling out of society often means withdrawing from everything that can aid the creation of a meaningful life, starting with a job of some kind. From 1965 to our conversation today, it's been basically a straight line out of the workforce. And it's eerie if you track this on a graph or a piece of paper. Why lift a load if there's nothing in it for you? That's a thing that we're doing to men that's a very bad idea. And to boys, it's like, you're pathological and oppressive. It's like, fine then, why the hell am I going to play? If that's the situation, if I get no credit for bearing responsibility, you could bloody well be sure I'm not going to bear any. But then, you know, your life is useless and meaningless. And you're full of self-contempt and nihilism, and that's not good. It's not good. But that's where so many men are, and patterns of addiction shield them from facing the fact that their lives lack the meaning necessary to sustain them. With drugs, video games, social media, and adult content, among the most common forms of self-medication and escapism. Forgetting oneself takes precedence over the arduous task of making meaning in a world that needs and wants men less than ever. And vital human connections, from friendships to sexual partners, are lost or never found. A stunning trove of new data from the Pew Research Group highlights just how big of a problem we have, one that soon could reach a total point of no return. 63% of young men today, between the ages of 18 to 29, report being single. That is compared to 34% of young women. If you think about it, it's so wild. That is a two to one male to woman gender ratio in the dating scene for young people. If this is not hitting you with 63% of men, how does that happen? How are there half the amount of single women as there are single men in this age bracket? It's actually wild. Increasingly desperate and marginalized men turn to websites like TikTok and OnlyFans to simp for crumbs of acknowledgement or sign up to AI companion apps like Replica. Until recently, Replica was a free application designed to bond its users with AI chatbots. But for £70 a year, you could access its erotic roleplay features. Many of Replica's users melted earlier this year when its creators decided to dispense with those features. The reaction from the community was like, you took away my girlfriend. Oh, Jesus Like, you took Christ. away my, like, partner. These people had legitimately bonded with a bot. AI shuts down erotic role play community, shares suicide <laughs> prevention resources over loss. Oh my goodness. It's pretty dystopian, man. This is how far men have fallen. From purposeful providers and protectors of the old world, to invisible features of a brave new one, where dignity is lost and death comes early. Right now, young men commit at four times, yes, four times the rate of younger women. Males make up nearly 80% of all sides in the entire United States. How is that not the blaring headline across all outlets? Nobody wants to talk about this. They would rather ignore it completely or deny that it's even a problem. The data doesn't lie. It tells us that this society that supposedly privileges men at the expense of women is far more likely to drive men to unbearable depths of despair. I looked at their work on the side and one of the studies that really stopped me in my tracks, honestly, and it's a moment where you stop being a scholar and you just become a human being, this work by Fiona Shand looked at the words that men used to describe themselves before suicide, and the two most commonly used words by those men were useless and worthless. We cannot create a society which is more gender equal, which I fully support, but which also makes so many men feel like they're of no use anymore. They're worthless now. Thanks, guys, we got it from here. 
is not a great message. And so we've got to find a way to get through this messy situation we're in now so that there's a positive script for men that is compatible with this new world of economic equality. Because it's not going away, we're not going back to a world where... That word to economic equality, it's not equal, it's forced. Diversity and inclusion, it's artificially implanted. We're not a merit-based economy. Opportunities are not merit-based. We're just filling quotas. That's the issue. There's a lot of men that should be in a lot of these positions because of their merits. Yet, the quota must be met. We need to artificially prop people into these positions to virtue signal. It's all fake. That's the issue. It's not real. They're not deserving of these positions. This is the problem. They're not qualified. If we were educating women and they were qualified and they were willing to bust their ass and work overtime and they were just as good at the men at whatever it is they're doing, engineering, coding, programming, so on and so forth. If it was all the same, then that's fine. Let's compete. No problem. But when you take a highly qualified man and simply because he's a certain age, a certain skin color, and your office is lacking a certain amount of diversity and inclusion, you have to put that pile of those qualified men off to the side and only hire for a certain person. What is even fair? What is equal? What economic equality is that? That's the problem here. Nobody minds, man. This is why the system is broken. Nobody minds competing. If I get out competed by a man, woman, it doesn't matter. If they're better than me for the job, they're better than me. There's nothing I can do but just get better myself, become more qualified. But if I bust my ass and I did everything that was asked of me and I excelled and I have the experience and I go apply for this job and I'm told I'm not going to get hired and then the manager, whoever interviewed me, really loved me, wink, wink, nod, nod. Look, man, love to hire you, but you know, there's some quotas and stuff from on high, so I unfortunately can't extend you an offer. You know how many of those stories I've heard, how many of those emails I've read of men in these positions where they've acquired so many skills over so many years, but management now is trying to hit these diversity inclusion quotas, and now they're being let go, and they can't find work because of policies like this? I, you can read about it in the comments. I'm sure there's plenty of men that'll tell you stories where they got passed up. Those are just the ones where they tell you up front to your face because you've done so well. They like you so much. You know, hey, here's the reality of the situation. Or you get fired and you get told, hey, you know, this is coming on from coming from on high. We have to do this to hit these stupid quotas. Got to let you go, Bob. Sorry. You know, what? what is fair? How is that fair? Uh, women were economically dependent on men, except within families by choice. And those families will continue to be few and far between because the economic realities of the day make it impossible for most women to stay at home, even if they want to. The cost of living has continued to soar and most men can't afford to support a household single-handedly. That aside, it's hard to believe that the empowering script for men that people like Richard Reeves are calling for will be served in the coming years. Our leaders and institutions clearly have other ideas. The best we have are the messages of duty and accountability put forward by the likes of Jordan Peterson. Responsibility. That's what gives life meaning. It's like lift a load. Then you can tolerate yourself, right? Because look at you're useless, easily hurt, easily killed. Why should you have any self-respect? Pick something up and carry it. Make it heavy enough so that you can think, yeah, well, useless as I am, at least I could move that from there to there. Yeah, another amazing episode, man. The channel's called Beuto by anybody wondering. He did a really good one. One of his first videos went viral. <laughs> Recommend you guys sub to him. I'll leave it up here for you guys so you could see Beuto. And then there's one good comment that we should bring up. You missed some important issues. 40% of boys are raised without fathers. Without a father, a boy is more likely to grow up to have many possible issues like being homeless, going to prison, etc. Look up the, do schools discriminate against boys? The schools actively grade them worse. To add, girls receive billions more in scholarships. Due to various issues such as phthalates, pollution, male testosterone rates have declined significantly. Low T is associated with issues like lack of drive and depression. Man, there's, this problem is so multifaceted. Honestly, any direction you point at, you're going to strike gold. It's an issue. It's unfortunate. What's your guys' thoughts? We'll see you on the next one.